But there's another reason that I use the cross imagery in this scene, uh, and that's because when Yahweh actually passes by Moses, Moses is in that rock, hidden, and the Lord passes and proclaims his name. Uh, at the center of that name is the designation abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. That's kind of the heart of who God proclaims himself to be to his people. And you could, you could gloss steadfast love and faithfulness as um, sovereign love that graciously makes and keeps covenant with his people. God says, primary to my character is sovereign love that graciously makes and keeps covenant with my people. Um, and all throughout the Old Testament, this steadfast love and faithfulness uh, kind of echoes from this passage, echoing through the Psalms, through the prophets, through the other writings. And when you see the two together, uh, it, it reminds us of this uh, theophany where the Lord proclaimed himself. It's kind of a shorthand for the character of the God of Israel. Uh, and that's important because when we get to John's gospel, uh, in his prologue, uh, John 1.14, he says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory. That's echoing Moses saying, show me your glory. Uh, John says, we have seen his glory. Uh, glory as of the only begotten one from the Father, full of grace and truth. And those two terms, uh, and this is depending on scholarly uh, study that is beyond me. This is not my own digging. This is what others would say. Those two terms, grace and truth, uh, echo the central theme of steadfast love and faithfulness. So grace and truth is John's way of interpreting steadfast love and faithfulness. So essentially what he's saying is um, the God of Sinai, the God who descended on Sinai and proclaimed his name, we've seen him. The, the we eyewitnesses, John's saying, have seen that God. We've seen that same glory. It's the same glory. It's full of steadfast love and faithfulness. It's full of grace and truth. This is Yahweh of Sinai in the flesh dwelling in our midst. That's what John is getting across in his prologue. And then as we read through John's gospel, it becomes clear that the Son, really it starts clear, the Son has come to reveal the Father. He's the radiance of the Father's glory. He's making the character, the identity, the, the nature of his Father known. Remember, that's what glory is, to make uh, the internal beauty known. That's what Jesus is doing. Um, and in John's gospel, that work climaxes at the cross. Um, that is where Jesus most makes his Father known. You get things like John 8, 28, where he says, When you've lifted up the Son on the cross, when you've lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am. Uh, English would say I am he, but he's, Jesus is just saying, then you'll know that I am. You'll know that I am the God of Israel who is making known my Father perfectly. You'll know that when I'm up on the cross, when I've been lifted up, um, which is an amazing statement. Uh, another one that gets this across is John 13, uh, where Judas has just gone out. Jesus is going to the cross. It's a dark time, uh, literally dark, spiritually dark. And Jesus says, now, now as I go to the cross, now as I am entering into this olive press uh, of my earthly experience, now is the Son of Man glorified, uh, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Or again, um, John 17, 26, as Jesus is about to go to the cross, he says, Father, I've made your name known, and I will continue to make it known. Meaning, as I go to the cross, I'm not ceasing to be the revealer of God. As I go to the cross, I continue and climax the work of making the name, the character, the beauty, the glory of God known. So, Jesus is God the Son who has come to perfectly reveal his Father. Only God can reveal God. God the Son comes to reveal the Father. He's revealing the glory of the God of Sinai because he is the God of Sinai in the flesh. And uh, 
just in an, in an expectation obliterating way the climax of this God revealing work John tells us happens when the Son is lifted up on the cross in his crucifixion now of course that's only God revealing in light of the resurrection but the act that reveals the character of God the name of God is the cross um, so John is presenting uh, Calvary as the new and true Sinai. Uh, that's what I was trying to get across in this animation. When viewed in light of the resurrection, the cross of Christ becomes the definitive act of God's self-revelatory redemption. It's on the cross in the frail and bleeding human nature that he has woven into himself that Yahweh definitively proclaims himself to creation. It's by offering up his humanity to be accursed under the law in the place of his people that Yahweh shows himself uh, faithful both to punish and to save. It's by knitting mortality into the tapestry of his own infinite life and then giving that life wholly unto death for the sake of his beloved that the one true God reveals the full extent of his steadfast love. It's by wedding the life of God to five liters of human blood and then pouring that blood out over the altar of the cross that God shows himself to be the one who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. And it's by the Son becoming the guilt of his people's sin and drowning under the breakers of God's torrential wrath that the Lord of Sinai proclaims himself to be the one who will by no means clear the guilty. So the name that was whispered comparatively on Sinai is shouted from Golgotha. That's really the, the heart of this scene, the heart of this animation, and the heart of Full of Eyes uh, is, is that singular point, that the living the one true living creator God, Lord of heaven and earth, has definitively proclaimed himself to creation for our joy at the cross of Jesus Christ in the, in the self-giving, sin-bearing, wrath-absorbing, love-driven death of Christ. When we view that death in light of his victorious resurrection, only ever in light of the resurrection, but the beauty is seen in the death in light of the resurrection. That's how God has shown himself to us. That's how the only true God has proclaimed himself to us. Um, and so my prayer for myself, uh, for the effect of this animation, for the effect of Full of Eyes, is that we would more and more uh, drive into these things. We'd, we'd be taken further up and further in to the beauty of God by His Spirit as we know Christ crucified and risen as the definitive declaration of who God is, His character, His heart, His nature. Um, and as we draw out from that the implications, my God has shown Himself at a cross what are the implications for how I think, how I act, how I interact, what my priorities are, how I use what I have. Uh, the cross is, as a friend of mine has said, uh, Jesus crucified and risen is the hermeneutical key for all of reality. That's the lens. We don't look at anything without looking at it through Christ crucified and risen because that is God revealed. Um, and so my prayer is that uh, his people, those who trust him, would, would be united in, this, in the name of God that's made known through Jesus Christ. That we would be united by saying, this is my Lord and my God. This is my Savior. Uh, we would rejoice in that. That that would just be uh, the, the, what enamors us and drives us. And that we would sing the beauty of the crucified and risen God in all the ways he gives us to sing, verbally, visually, written, with acts of love, laying down our own lives, and that we would do that so that the world would realize 
what I've been eating, thinking is food, is ashes. I'm covered in worthless ashes, and there's only one true food, and it's the one true living triune God who has communicated himself to us within the sphere of creation through the Son and through the Son's death and resurrection. Um, that's my prayer. And uh, may, may we all be given the grace to work it out more and more in our lives for our joy and for the ingathering of those who don't yet know him and for the eternal, uh, unparalleled glory of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll talk to you later.